It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And there's no love lost between these AFC North foes. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the world steel capital in the city of Bridges, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Akershire Stadium. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North, as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here in the Steel City, I'm Brandon Gauden, joined by my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, it doesn't matter what year it is, who the players are that are wearing the black and gold, it is never an easy assignment to come in and win here in Pittsburgh on this field. And this team always takes on the identity of this city. They're gonna be tough physically, but they're also gonna be tough mentally. Just three head coaches in 54 years, they've established their program, they know who they are. Good luck coming in and trying to take one from the Steelers. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it, but there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. The kicker Chris Boswell has it ready to go, and we are underway from Pittsburgh. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticisms. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is prove every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. The drive starts with a completion left side, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An early statement on the game's first play, 18 yards and a first down. Well, this defense certainly knows they're going to have their hands full trying to slow down this passing game. Here's an example on the very first play from scrimmage. I think we'll see some different looks, maybe some pressure from different places, but it didn't work there, and it's a quick first down. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Tackle made by Montrevious Adams. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. They work now on second and nine. Here's Browning. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've comped it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign. Took his game to a new level and made him a first round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. Kenny Pickett connecting with Deontay Johnson. And the Steelers take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Well, that's how you take advantage of an early turnover. A sudden change situation, meaning ball's turned over. How's both sides going to handle it? One side handled it way better. They went right out on the field and put the ball in the end zone. One play, that just added insult to injury. Yeah, that just tells you on the defensive side, they didn't come out ready to go, still reeling from the fact that the ball got turned over. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that makes the score 7-0.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. To throw, Browning. That's caught by the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the 31, here's second down and two. And out of his hands quickly to Higgins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football, all right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. Now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From just across the midfield stripe, here's second and a yard. Now Browning. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. As Jamar Chase, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. throw again and that's going to be incomplete the coverage too good there the contact popped the ball free and it's fourth down well, anytime he reads man coverage I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game he'll test the perimeter but that time they were up to the challenge so on fourth down on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals Back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25 and it will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. This is one of the dangers of going for the punt block. And you know before you even call going for the block, it's a risk-reward play. So many factors come into it. They went after it, and you know punters, what they do? They leave their leg up in there, an extra count or two, hoping someone comes into contact. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. There's your co-NFL record holder, T.J. Watt, doing what he does best, terrorizing quarterbacks. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Throwing on second and long. Browning. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. I have a few questions about that throw because to me, there just wasn't a lot there. I thought he tried to do a little bit too much, almost tried to will a receiver open when there was no chance he was going to be. Nice job by the linebacker 
being all over that one and knocking it away. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game. I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play call. Well, I can tell you what. When he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. So an eight-play drive gets him down there, but play number nine, that winds up on this field goal. And they definitely move the ball well. That's a drive where you hate to come away with nothing. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. This could end up being a pretty big drive. I mean, look, yes, it's early in this game, but they scored the touchdown. They got the stop. And now if they could get in the end zone here again, CD, they could grab an early stranglehold on this one. Yeah, they certainly can. And that's what you're looking for. Where's the advantage? Can you gain it? Can you press it? Now for them, finishing it off because right now it's out there for them. They've just got to go seize it. Tackle made that time by B.J. Hill. Pretty effective blitz there to stop the draw play right in its tracks. And actually, when they blitz, draw play is supposed to work very well. You're supposed to have them bypass the runner, and he slips past them. But they put their eyes in the right place, took away all the creases, and slowed him down in a big way. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And this is going to be incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. Now on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. Back deep for Cincinnati, the rookie Charlie Jones. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's second and seven. Again, it's Mixon. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Throwing again, Browning. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. Should be an impactful play because if you get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves, that they might get hit with a screen, 
Maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson in the Bengal field goal unit. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. On the return from his end zone, Godwin Igwebuke. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And the Steelers set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. Look at lost it. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Now pick it. Henriksen showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. The Steelers send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Browning. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Options galore here. Second and a few inches. Inside handoff to Mixon. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. Back to Mixon on first down. 
Good move at the 30. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard. Second down and a yard. Looking to throw. Browning, man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone. Mark him at the 21. From the gun to give to Mixon. And they got it inside the 10 at the 8. Sets him up nicely. First and goal. It was a pickup of 14. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Back to throw. Browning. Touchdown. Drew Sample from eight yards out, and the Bengals have taken the lead. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays, because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead is now 10 to 7. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They'll start the drive with Harris. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Now a second and six. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. And that one too wide and incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Back to throw, pick it. That's caught, Allen Robinson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Joe Mixon in the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. 
Looking to throw. Browning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. This offense so far on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Back to throw. Browning. And that will be incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. On now to punt, Brad Robbins. Deep to return is Calvin Austin. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 27. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now run straight ahead with Warren. A oh, heck of a move. Man. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five, Five defensive DBs. backs. But then you go to six, what are you going to call that? And they call it a Double dive. It. <laughs> <laughs> a dive, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up, but I know one thing. Offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. Yeah, we saw that advantage right there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Second and 10. On the give, it's Warren. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Play action, Pickett. Here's one deep for Pickens. And at the seven yard line, the catch is made. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 46 yards. Uh, they lulled them to sleep there, so to speak. That was all set up by the running game, wasn't it? Another example of what all offensive coordinators tell us. When the running game's operating, it really opens up the playbook. And that's when they hit them with the play action. And you can see the defenders rushing towards the line of scrimmage, then scrambling back trying to cover. Couldn't get there in time. Well scripted. They had the big running play, now the big passing play. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Harris. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And how nice is it to have a guy like Najee Harris in the backfield when you get down near the goal line? He can use his 230-plus pound frame to just get you those tough yards, and he finishes things off here with a touchdown run. Extra point now by Boswell. And that makes it 14-10. A drive that time of six plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. From the 22, Browning. He completes it to Boyd. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. Finding space at the 40 as they finally wrangle him in at the 48. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Mixon with a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second and eight. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there's no way that ball was going to be caught. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete themselves another first down as the tackles made at the Steelers 41 yard line the Bengals passing game finding a rhythm they've got another first partner normally double coverage reserved for receivers and tight ends but this time they actually targeted the running back with it and it still wasn't enough he attacked the defense and got in a great position to haul in the catch and get a nice gain out of it three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Operating from the gun. Browning. Short throw to Smith, and he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. On third down, Mixon. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. 
Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Mixing up the middle, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Looking to throw on second down. Browning throwing middle, and it's complete. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is it. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Trenton Irwin from eight yards out and the Bengals are able to move back in front well executed there offensively defense looked a little confused but he found his receiver and that one good for six points and the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Najee Harris and the rest of this offense work their way back onto the field. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Here's Pickett on second down. This is caught by Robinson. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll lead here to a third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Looking to throw, pick it. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He had the touchdown earlier, this one's gonna get him a first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. On first and ten, it's Pickett. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Fans do love the long ball, don't they? And he already found his guy once. Tried to give him another chance there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Couldn't connect. But as you alluded to, he does have that touchdown from earlier. Trying to keep him in the rhythm. Now a second and ten.
They'll throw again with Pickett. Finding room in midfield. And gets it across the 50 and down to the 48. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Zone coverage here defensively. They're going to let their tight end run a drag across the field. This is where a linebacker gets forced to pass him off. That time, the receiver gets lost a little bit, and he's able to make the catch and pick up good yardage in a first down. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they've been back on the heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Setting up the screen, Harris. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Dialing up another pass here. Pick it. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing. And they get a nice pick up here toward the end of the first half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, Browning. He'll drop this one down to mix it. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Now second and three. Now Browning. Short throw to Smith. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. Here's Browning. Catch is made here by Herm Smith Jr. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This from 44 yards away. McPherson's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. 
Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Both of these offenses had their share of high points in that first half. Each team had some big moments, and it would seem this could turn out to be a game where the last score wins. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. This taken in right around the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Well, the Steeler offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football. And now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together, come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Harris running straight ahead. Five yards, now it's third and five. I have to think a major focus at a halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. That is caught. And he will have the Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in... He's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Pick it, back to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. A 
Operating from the gun. Browning. He'll air this one out for Boyd. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there. And that's a play that's been involved the last few years in all aspects of football. But they couldn't get the hook up there. And the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. On third down, Browning. He's got his target. That's complete. And they work this out past the 25. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Throwing on first down. Browning over the middle. He finds Higgins. He'll be hit down at the 33. Five yards on the play. From the 33, here's second down and five. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this one complete to Smith. 83 yards receiving now for him on the afternoon as he's got a first down here. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. On the delay, it's Mixon, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 40-yard line. And they'll come up second and seven. Looking to throw. Browning. This is caught. It's Boyd. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 31-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10. Down at the 31. Back to throw. Browning. Over the middle. That's caught by Chase. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Off play action. Browning. This one hauled in by Sample. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. A handoff to Mixon. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 81 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, it's a nice running right there. That's what got them the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. They'll give it to Mixon. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. You told me before it's tough to identify how to block a 3-4 defense. There wasn't a whole lot of blocking there. And one other thing an offensive line coach told me, if you want to run wide against a 3-4, which is difficult to do because of the speed of the outside linebackers, it's often difficult for your offensive linemen to hit targets in space and create lanes for your guys to run through. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal.
Operating from the gun. Brown, a touchdown, Bengals. T. Higgins, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. This has to be great for the psyche of this offense. Presented with bad field position, they didn't let it stop them. They rolled downfield and scored a touchdown. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. They'll try and throw for it. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. And of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 28-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Johnson's got it complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, down. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. They hand this off to Harris, and he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. From the 41, here's a second and eight. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And that is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The Steelers send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. T. Higgins leading the Cincinnati receiving core out for this upcoming series. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good. But there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check. But he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. And when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. You get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. To throw on second down, Browning. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. 
So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Short throw to Smith. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. At the Steelers, 45-yard line. Looking to throw. Browning. Goes right back to Smith again. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. Back to throw again. Got a man open. It's Chase. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll make it second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. They'll look to throw again. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had it and dropped it. That is an unforced error there, and it takes away what could have been a touchdown. And that's one of the few things that has not gone right for this offense so far. They've had their share of big plays. That was nearly another. But somehow, he just couldn't squeeze it. Throwing again on second and 10. Browning. And that is caught but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and 10. Here's a give to Mixon. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive is eating up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Back to throw. Browning. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bengals have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary, a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Steelers, 14. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Igwebuke to return it from his end zone here. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Second down and six now from the 26. Looking to throw, pick it. Got his man, it's Warren. Give him five on the screen play and that'll set up a third down. Now pick it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it, and were able to keep the drive moving. A handoff for Warren. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Ten yards on the pickup in second and inches. A good position to be in here, second and inches. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Going across the formation, he finds Fryer move. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 38-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. That's a good-looking play to me. The big tight end on a crossing route coming underneath. Sometimes he can gain some serious momentum going forward, can he? Yeah, he can indeed, and pretty well executed there. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Here's second and ten. Back to throw, pick it. And he's got his target, Harris. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 12-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Boy, a lot of moving parts on this play, but what a nice design to leak the running back out to the left and send him down the field. And a good job spotting him and hitting him for a big play. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Running left, it's Warren. And he'll get this one down to about the 10 yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Pick it, a look to throw it here. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Kenny Pickett fighting Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. I say <laughs> run the football. You've got the lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Now it's Mixon running right. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. He was brought down to the 26. It's a game of four. And it's third down. And the Bengals on third down. They're hitting at 60%. Six out of ten thus far. This is third and nine to throw Browning. And that is incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Here's Austin. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Steelers ready for their next possession. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder... If they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play, I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. On the draw, it's Harris. Able to slither by. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. They'll come up now, third and three. From the gun, here's Pickett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Bengals grab it. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of a quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you. All right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Take care of the ball. Because here come the defenders. From the gun to give to Mixon. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do. But I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is excellent. You get five. That's a whale of a game. Here's Browning. That's going to be caught. Touchdown. Jamar Chase, a 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals have made it a three-score game now here in the fourth. 
And he's got them out now to a three score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one CD and well he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three score game. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he returns this to the 22. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout. And all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Pat Fryermuth, the intended target. And now it's second down. Pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a gain of seven. Brings up third and three. They'll throw again with Pickett. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. That's interference. Defense. We can't have that. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Pick it right back to the air again. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Here's Pickett. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Pickett back to throw. Pickens on the slant. 
A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? Ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Pick it. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Allen Robinson from a yard out. And the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. The fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. And that's why you have your hand team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. Inside handoff to Mixon. Had a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Decent start defensively to this series. They've got to stop them here and get this ball back. I like the way you phrase that, partner. Decent start, but now it's got to be more about the ball. It's all about the ball, getting it away from them, because making good tackles is one thing, but the clock will run out on you. You've got to have the football back for your offense. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now Browning. He gets this one to Boyd. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson and the Bengal field goal unit. This to make it a three-score game late. from distance, but he couldn't work it back in, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. So another long try for three, and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. This is first and ten. Pick it to throw. Pass complete to Robinson. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. They'll come up now on second down. Looking to throw here. Pick it. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, 
get them on the ground. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. This one, an absolute must. It's fourth and four. Pick it, fourth down, desperation time. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is going to have the Steelers first down by a good couple of yards as they end up getting six there on fourth and four. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Here's Pickett. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Trey Hendrickson in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. An assortment of sacks in this game. This one the product of a good jump and terrific effort. Moves quickly off the snap of the ball. Doesn't let up until he's in the backfield and impacting the quarterback. Now pick it. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. The decision made for him. They've got to go. It's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. 